Hello, and welcome to Pick My Solo Live, deep dive number 61. And uh, I am Andrew Bear, joined by Patrick Crowley. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Uh, in this deep dive, we'll be talking about the best states for solar incentives. Ooh. As always, ask us questions in the comments if you have anything, and we'll uh, answer those this week or next week. Or another week. Any week, yes. Any we'll week. <laughs> All right, getting right into the states. Yeah. <laughs> the first one we have is uh, New York. So what makes New York's uh, incentives for solar so good, Pat? Well, there's just a bunch of them. That's right. the easiest way to say it. Um, <laughs> their state tax credit, I would put up there, probably is the best state tax credit. 25% of the cost of the system. Yes, capped at $5,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at $20,000 of your total system cost, it will be capped at 5000 But even so, when you combine that with the federal tax credit, right. you're looking at... Generally speaking, between a full 55 and maybe 45 percent, that is with those combined tax credits. Yeah, and so that is just it, it, on its own a fantastic incentive. Right. On top of that, they have these megawatt blocks, which are distributed by Naserta, um, which is the state kind of using different regions and utilities to deploy different rebates. The Long Island has a rebate that has been fully exhausted because so many people. Mm -hmm. There's you know every every of every single one of um, these block rebates functions in tiers where they have a certain amount of allocated funding and in your first tier you have the highest rebate once that tier fills up you go into the next tier and then the next and the next and eventually all of the funding would be exhausted okay okay so new york is basically chopped up into a bunch of regions three as it relates to the the rebate okay and so there's long island which is entirely full con edison's territory which is the five boroughs in westchester county which is still uh, still active at a 30 cent per watt rebate Mm -hmm. So that's, if you want to just break it down easy, 10 kilowatt system, $3,000 rebate. Mm -hmm. uh, so tack that on to your other incentives and it gets really great. And then upstate New York, which is effectively everything else, is still at 35 cents a watt rebate. Wow. So yeah, upstate New York is able to get a little bit more right now. Uh, but both of those rebates are fantastic. And Long Island has already benefited from their full funding mm -hmm. in that respect. Right. Um, and then the last one is um, if you are in New York City. So if you're in New York City, you're going to get the state tax credit, mm -hmm. the Con Ed rebate, which is 30%, or th not, sorry, not 30%, 30, 30 cents per watt. Right. And you're going to get a tax abatement, which is off your property taxes, and you get 5% of that for four years for a total of 20%. 5% off of your property taxes or? Great question. So the 5% of your system cost as okay. a property tax abatement. So you take 5% of the, so take your property taxes that you would have paid, subtract 5% of the cost of your solar system, and that's your new property taxes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's a very easy way to explain it. So what is, like, all of this combined, what's the total, like, uh, percentage off you see people get? In New York City, I've seen up to 80, a oh little higher than 80%. I mean, that's kind of the, that's the Goldilocks scenario. Yeah, sure. Because okay. you have your 55% of your two tax credits, and then your 20% property tax abatement takes you to 70%, mm -hmm. and then your rebate would push you a little above 80. Most times you're gonna see in the 70 to 75 range, because one thing with the rebate is basically uh, the shade factor of your roof can reduce your rebate if it's really shaded. They mm -hmm. don't wanna be giving out a whole bunch of incentives if you're not gonna right. be really utilizing that full solar system. Right. Uh, and the, um, the tax credit being capped at 5,000. So if you have a $40,000 solar system, it's effectively right. a 12 and a half percent rebate. So it can shift, but I mean, it, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer in this in these regions. If you're seeing 70 to 75 percent off common, then that's I mean that's huge. Twenty thousand dollars system comes down to about five thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. At net, yes, yeah, that is, it's pretty remarkable. That's and in the abatement, remember that's just in the boroughs. So Westchester County, Upstate New York, Long Island, you can't get that. Just in the boroughs, I believe it's actually defined as cities with over a million in population. Okay. So if a whole bunch of people want to move to. <laughs> you know Rochester, New York. Then yeah. Maybe they'll be eligible for it. Uh, don't know really what's what's going on over there, but uh, <laughs> no, they'll get the upstate rebate in Rochester, New York. They'll get the state tax credit. It's still a great area for solar. The whole state is fantastic for solar. It just kind of depends on where you are, yeah. what exactly you're going to get. Right. Because you're still going to get multiple rebates no matter where you are. Right. Yeah. And then so the next state we have on here is New Jersey. So New Jersey does their rebates a different way. Do you want to explain an SREC? Yes. So an SREC is basically we. You can classify it as a performance payment. It's a 
And um, what does SREX stand for? I'm blanking on the S, but it's Renewable Energy Certificate. I believe state. State renewable. Yes, state. state yeah, yeah, and that's that would make sense because it's state by state is yeah. the SREC market, and so the SREC market largely functions like the stock market. Right. You know the 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 whole purpose of an SREC is the utilities or the states have to produce a certain amount of or certain percentage of their power from green sources, mm-hmm. and the SREC program allows them to not build a solar array but to take your solar and claim it as their own production, and they compensate you for that. Right, so, okay, yeah. So they're buying your solar from you, essentially, at, right. really, at, a, at a high rate, at a low rate? New Jersey, they're, so a megawatt hour, 1,000 kilowatt hours, your mm-hmm. average system in New Jersey is probably producing, you know, anywhere from five to 10 of these a year, depending on you know what your system is like, mm-hmm. and so that's, I, th- I believe the term in New Jersey uh, is up to 15 years, and so the price okay. the pl- prices could change. But if you're talking, you know, a thousand, or in in, the, in this case, like a thousand to two thousand dollars a year, roughly, yeah. in terms of SREC payments, over 15 years, that is significant. That's um, and that's if you wanted to play the market. There are also brokers that work in these states. And New Jersey is not the only state with SRECs, but they have a really really high uh, high value because they combine, you know, relatively easy solar install with a high SREC market. Washington, D.C. is an example of a place that has a high SREC market, but it's really tough to install mm-hmm. solar in D.C. Um, but effectively, this is on top of your net metering. So you're already getting all those savings from exchanging your kilowatt hours with the grid. Wow, okay. And then on top of that, all of what you produce, this the your utility or the state really is going to say, that is mine now, and here's my glory. So you produce, let's say... 100 kilowatt hours uh, in a month Mm -hmm. and say you used 120 so your net is you used 20 Mm -hmm. but you're saying that 100 in addition to offsetting the 100 from your consumption right which is basically like making money is also going to be paid back at this SREC rate correct so you're like double making money on those. Yeah, so your solar savings you could almost just put in isolation, and the SRECs are separate. Mm-hmm. And they have things that are they're called usable terms. I believe New Jersey's is three years, so you can once you get once you produce a megawatt hour, um, a thousand kilowatt hours, you can you get that SREC. Mm-hmm. You can hold it for three years before you have to sell it. Mm-hmm. And so if you wanted to play the market and you, were, you thought it was going to come up or go <laughs> down, you know that's pretty nuanced. And yeah. you know it's it's um, New, New Jersey isn't that volatile. So it's probably something you could get away with. I don't know whether or not it would make sense for you. That'd be if you had a financial advisor or someone who really understood that market a little bit better. Yeah, that would be someone I would advise you to talk to if you're in if you're in New Jersey. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, though. and the the last point on that I should mention mm-hmm. is if this seems all too complicated and don't want to play the market, don't want to keep track of that, there are brokers that'll just do it for you, mm-hmm. and you can do you can get a fixed term up front. So you can get, I believe that there's a broker uh, called Soul Systems there that'll give you an SREC, and I'm not 100% sure on these values, so forgive me if I'm wrong, in your first three years, they will pay you, uh, I believe it's $180 per SREC, and then in the next seven years, they'll pay you 55 And so they they probably, they're taking the safe route mm-hmm. and kind of giving you a so upfront payment, basically. You know what you're going to get across the lifetime of your system, so whatever happens to that market, you know what you're going to make. Mm-hmm. Likely, it's going to be a little bit below what you would get if you try to just play the market and exchange yourself, right. but it's taken care of for you. Yeah. So there's certainly options to capitalize on this if you don't want to be, you know, watching the SREC market or, you know, even just doing the exchange yourself. It's like savings insurance. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to look at it. It's, yeah. So then our next state we have is Massachusetts. All right. So Massachusetts has a couple here as well. Do you want to walk us through the SMART program first? Sure. So the SMART program, it's a little tricky, and it's pretty new. So it's you know thirty, roughly thirty cents per kilowatt hour uh, utility rebate. Not sure if I call it a rebate, but it's more of it's, it's it almost replaces net metering. So you're charged around nineteen twenty cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. In these regions in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. and so it's not like an SREC where you have your net metering at that nineteen twenty cents and then you get this, uh-huh. this is effectively what the buyback rate is for you. And so for every kilowatt hour you produced, mm-hmm. you would get effectively 30 cents credit. 
Okay. Versus everyone you use, you would get 20. And so That's there's a couple different ways to craft this. And you can cash these out as well. So you could do 100% offset and just basically rake in an extra 10 to 11 yeah, cents per okay. kilowatt hour. Or you could size your system to about 70% offset mm -hmm. because your kilowatt hours produced are going to be worth a little more. Yeah. So there's multiple ways that you could attack that and benefit from it. Uh, and the smart program, the one thing I should say about Massachusetts is Massachusetts has been really at the forefront outside of the large, large, obvious solar states like California, Hawaii, Arizona, those states where you would just associate with solar. Mm -hmm. They've been at the forefront of incentives and solar policy. You know, I'd really say for, for, for as long as I've been in the industry, certainly. Mm -hmm. They had the SREC program, the SREC 2 program, both of which went away, but they always replaced it with something else to make sure that their homeowners were getting an incentive. Um, and then the SMART program, people were a little nervous because the SREC program there was so good. The SMART program savings are, I would say, just as good as SREC 2. Yeah. They're just very different. We just went over how SRECs work. Right. Uh, in Massachusetts, I think, was in the 260, 280 range in SREC, so very good mm -hmm. SRECs. Uh, but the SMART program functions just a little bit differently, and it's all handled on your utility bill. You mm -hmm. can see that there's no exchange to a broker or anything like that. It's just handled on your utility bill, and you can cash those credits sure. out. Sure, it's nice to be a little less complicated. Right. And so they also over also offer a solar loan, which is uh, a special solar loan for Massachusetts? Yes, so the state offers this program, uh, which basically you can't other, it's, it's, it's almost kind of like a, a marketplace for loans, where loan providers can plug in to Mass Solar Loan okay. and effectively try to compete for different projects by offering low rates. Um, and there's a fixed limit, so they can't go above a certain rate. Okay. So they can't kind of, you know, I don't want to say collude, but kind of work together to kind of say, oh, here's your offers, and they're always high. Gotcha. So you can, you're going to have some lower rates. They're fixed. They offer um, pretty aggressive, what I would call, income-based discounts. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but you know, modest, modest salaries could still apply for what they would call a low-income uh, discount, which is a, I believe it ranges from a 20 to a 30% discount on your loan principal. So wow. it's a pretty significant, if, if you're considering mass solar loan, regardless of your income, I would advise you at least check out what that low income bracket looks like to see if something fits into that. Because mm -hmm. um, I just would classify it as strictly a low income like, table, you know? Okay. Um, it, you just kind of, from my, what I, what I would imagine to be low income, I don't necessarily think all of those things would fall for that bucket. So I think they have a very aggressive funding yeah. opportunity for, for a, lot, a lot, of lot of people. Correct. Yeah. Okay. More than you might normally associate with that with that bracket okay um, and then lastly the state tax credit um, it's effectively a thousand dollar state tax credit yeah I was gonna say a lot yeah. of systems would meet that maximum yeah there's no the, I, I don't think I've run into a system that has been less than that yeah okay sounds good though so Massachusetts you got three ways you're benefiting there as well the the, the one thing that I should mention about the smart program is it only applies uh, to the three large utilities there Mm -hmm. And Massachusetts has a lot of smaller municipal utilities within the state. So mm -hmm. those utilities, if you're in one of these utilities, you cannot get the SMART program. Fortunately, a lot of those utilities offer utility rebates in usually the two to $3,000 range from what I've seen. Gotcha. So okay. a lot of those really small municipal utilities, mm -hmm. um, Hudson Light and Electric is one of them, Wakefield Light and Electric, uh, though they offer solar rebates. Uh, and those programs are run straight through that utility. So they can't get the SMART program, which is a little bit of a disappointment because they could get, could get the SREX, right. but they cannot get the SMART program. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's, so, so, okay, so taking all of this, how much have you seen off of the system in Massachusetts? It's a little bit different uh, because the SMART program, the, it's, it's kind of, we call it after the fact, so it doesn't really right. affect your net cost, uh, but, you know, it would increase your savings against the, the uh, like, what, what would have been your savings by you know 20 30 percent so then you're seeing a good payback period is really right. where this yes comes to. that's that's a great point it's more it's more beneficial on the payback period gotcha. and your, your general ROI and kind of seeing the benefits of your system down the road are a little more tangible in Massachusetts mm -hmm. because you're going to continue to get excess um, a, a, a excess credits and that's for 10 years the smart program you get that, that incentive for 10 years gotcha so then our next state that we're going to take a look at is D.C. You said it's hard to install solar. Yes. But 
if you can, you right. have some pretty good SREX available. Yeah, and so you know, if you want to, like a, a system cost, a net system cost, maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in in Washington D.C. And if you have, if you're getting ten SREX a year, you're getting four thousand dollars a year. And so within the SREX on its own, you could pay back your system with, without net metering. You could pay back your system in four or five years. Wow. And so that's why I mean, but it's very, there's a lot of old brownstones, historical districts, um, mm -hmm. you know really tight roof spaces just due to the geography and you know, yeah. the way that city is built that do make it difficult for solar. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one benefit is, like you mentioned, if you can do it, it's an incredible program to get into because we've seen SREX climb there. Washington, D.C. has set a very, wow. very aggressive renewable portfolio standard, mm -hmm. one which I think is, is difficult for them to obtain. So the market for these SREX is growing and growing yeah. because they want to encourage people who might be a little more fringe in terms of a solar install to adopt the technology. Yeah. So if you're considering it in Washington, D.C., um, or if, if it's even on your mind, I would encourage you to look at the numbers because they're pretty remarkable. Yes. And see if solar installation is even possible for you. And this is another one where the cost might not be down as much up front, but because you're getting paid so much for everything you produce, the payback period is going to look good. We did a, a project a little while ago in D.C., and I the um, there was, even with a loan payment, you're you're making money day one, not saving yeah. money, making money day one. Wow! So it's a it's a very impressive market in the right situation. It's mm -hmm. just a little bit harder to find that situation in Washington D.C. Gotcha. But it's a, it's pretty remarkable what you do. And then we have the federal tax credit, which is the one that I think most everyone is aware of. Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to step down next year. This is our last year on the thirty percent. Right. Um, so that is what is making 2019 a particularly good year, although it's only stepping down to 26%, so it's not crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the next, this year and the subsequent two years will still be good years for solar savings. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this year is better than next, and next better than yeah. the one after. Uh, but the next three years, I would say, are really the sweet spot for solar, this year being the sweetest spot, the bullseye. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you can like time it so that you're getting an installation in the latter half of this year, then you've done a pretty good job at maximizing right. some of those tax credits. Yeah, and a point to note, if, especially in those those New York the New York situations, but uh, the we're kind of predicting the um, the Con Edison rebate to step down in November December. So in that territory, mm. particularly important, you try and get your option squared away in 2019. Uh, but the other thing is, all of these incentives are based off of renewable po portfolio standards. If that portfolio standard does not increase, the need to offer incentives over time will decrease because right. more people will help them meet that standard. Once they get to that standard, if they don't extend it, sure. Plenty, <coughs> plenty <me>. of <coughs> political implications to all of these rebates and credits, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, if you know your state, you know, California recently extended uh, their renewable portfolio standard to 100% by either 2045 or 2050. Yeah. So I would not be blown away to see some California state incentives re-enter the market where they previously left the market. Mm -hmm. And so New York, I believe, is at 50%. So in the next three or four years, maybe New York does a similar thing and goes to 100%. I would expect to then see the requisite funding enter these programs again, or new right. programs come up. And that's what happened with Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That's why the SMART program came about. They extended their renewable portfolio renewable portfolio standard. So that's really a precursor to a lot of incentives, mm -hmm. is growing the need to meet a certain standard. Got it. And there you have it with the um, uh, the best states for solar, as brought to you by Pick My Solar. As always, come to us for good solutions for competing solar providers, and we'll do all of that complicated stuff Pat just explained for you. <laughs> so <laughs> It's not that complicated, I promise, I promise. <laughs> You look at it Especially once you see the numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the numbers look great. <laughs> um, so that's a wrap, and we will see you guys next week. Adios.